Welcome back. Lovely to see you again. On this episode, we explore communism's satanic nature. That's right, straight from the mouths of communist dictators in their own words, we hear their takes on communism's satanic roots. Right, let's get underway with this story written by Epoch Times senior investigative reporter Joshua Phillip. And please stick with me on this. I promise it's going to be worth your time. We're going to dig into history today. And as Theodore Roosevelt said, the more you know about the past, the better you are prepared for the future. Now, communism has caused the deaths of more than 100 million people over the last century through famine, political killings and genocide. It has created societies where power is held by a small group that enslaves entire nations and where killing fields, gulags and re-education through labour camps become part of everyday life. But the economic failures, mass killings and slave nations created by communism are not the biggest of the system. The biggest crime of communism is its destruction of the human soul. Speaking of the human soul and Theodore Roosevelt, he also said, unless man is master of his soul, all other kinds of mastery amount to little. A key goal of communism is to demoralize societies, to destroy the culture, religion and basic values of any society it touches. This goal is laid out clearly in the Communist Manifesto in which Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels wrote in 1848 that communism abolishes all religion and all morality. The most terrifying thing for someone is the destruction of faith, belief and morality. In the Bible, the book of Matthew states, quote, Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which was able to destroy both soul and body in hell. End quote. We've seen repeatedly that the goal of communism is to destroy the soul of humankind. Now let's touch on history and learn from it. Stick with me. When a famine swept Russia in 1921, after former Soviet leader Vladimir Lenin ordered seeds to be taken from the farmers, between 5 and 10 million people starved. According to the Black Book of Communism, Lenin's response was that the famine was good for the communist movement, since, quote, famine would also destroy faith not only in the Tsar, but in God too, unquote. While communism wears various masks, including attempts to convince people that its intentions are benign, the influence of its roots can always be seen. While communism pretends to be atheist, many of its founders, including Marx, were not. We talked about this earlier, remember? They actually held satanic beliefs. The Romanian preacher Richard Wormbrand, who spent 13 years in prison under communism, documented much of this history in his book Marx and Satan. One example is Mikhail Bakunin, one of Marx's partners in the First International, who wrote, quote, The evil one is the satanic revolt against divine authority, revolt in which we see the fecund germ of all human emancipations, the revolution. Socialists recognize each other by the words in the name of the one to whom a great wrong has been done, unquote. He also said, quote, In this revolution we have to awaken the devil and the people, to stir up the basest passions. Our mission is to destroy, not to edify, unquote. Marx's Satanism is evident in his early writings. He wrote in the poem, Invocation of One in Despair, that he would build his throne high overhead, and continued, Cold, tremendous shall its summit be, for its bulwark, superstitious dread, for its martial, blackest agony, who looks on it with a healthy eye, shall turn back struck, deathly pale and dumb, clutched by blind and chill. Mortality, may his happiness prepare its tomb." Unquote. In Marx's poem, The Fiddler, he writes, quote, the hellish vapours rise and fill the brain, till I go mad and my heart is utterly changed. See this sword, the prince of darkness, sold it to me." Unquote. Biographer Robert Payne wrote in his 1968 book, Marx, that Marx, quote, "...had the devil's view of the world and the devil's malignity. Sometimes he seemed to know that he was accomplishing works of evil." Unquote. We can also show through the core tenets of communism that by its nature it is satanic. This goes back to dialectical materialism, which Joseph Stalin described in 1938 as the world outlook of the Marxist-Leninist party. 
Satanism. So how does it work? It works by inverting values within the Christian system. Dialectical materialism, on the other hand, works by inverting the values of all traditional beliefs in all upright religious systems. It works on three principles to identify, contradict, and eliminate the middle. The inversion of whichever traditional value it is targeting becomes the issue pressed by communism. And it uses these inversions of traditions and morals to drive society into struggle and uses this struggle to destroy the values that exist within that society. Pope Pius XI wrote in 1937 that under this system, communism attempts to, quote, sharpen the antagonisms which arise between the various classes of society, unquote. Using this, he said, the communists create class struggle to create violent hate that can drive forward its issues under the false banner of progress. So communism is not just a political system or an economic system. Its forms exist within many movements designed to destroy our values, our traditions, and our beliefs. It is a spectre, as Marx described it, that aims to destroy humankind. If this topic interests you, please visit the Epoch Times and check out our latest editorial, How the Spectre of Communism is Ruling Our World. The crimes of communism have not been fully compiled, and its ideology still persists. The Epoch Times seeks to expose the history and beliefs of this movement, which has been a source of tyranny and destruction since it emerged. I would like to take a couple of paragraphs from the editorial and read them to you. I hope it will encourage you to look more into this important topic. The collapse of the communist regimes in the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe marked the way for a half-century-long Cold War between the capitalist and communist camps in the East and West. Many were thus optimistic, holding the belief that communism had become a relic of the past. The sad truth, however, is that a transmogrified communist ideology has instead taken hold and entrenched itself around the world. There are the outright communist regimes like China, North Korea, Cuba and Vietnam. There are also the former Soviet Union and Eastern European countries, where communist ideology and customs still exert a significant influence. There are the African and South American countries which attempt socialism under the banner of democracy and republicanism. And then there are the nations of Europe and North America whose body politics have become hosts to communist influences without people even realizing it. Communism breeds war, famine, slaughter and tyranny. These in themselves are terrifying enough, but the damage dealt by communism goes far beyond this. It has become increasingly clear to many that, unlike any other system in history, what communism declares war on is humanity itself, including human values and human dignity. Over the course of a century, communism established massive dictatorships in the Soviet Union and China. It caused more than 100 million unnatural deaths, it enslaved billions, and it brought the world to the brink of nuclear war and thus destruction. Yet more important is its deliberate and widespread destruction of the family, its fomenting of social disorder and its attacks on morality, all of which are ruinous to the foundations of civilization. What then is the nature of communism? What is its objective? Why does it take mankind as its enemy? And how can we escape it? From all of us at Declassified, thank you for your attention and I look forward to seeing you very soon. Thank you.